Hello everyone, welcome to another Rex Picks. Today we're going to be doing our review of Godzilla X Kong. So Billy and I, we went to see that this weekend and um, overall I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a lot of fun. What about you, Bill? Yeah, it was. I mean, like you know, we said, eh, god damn it. But like you said on the way there, this movie is not story driven. It's just a great fighting monster movie. Right. Now see, I've been a long time fan of Godzilla. I've been a fan of Godzilla probably before I could even talk. So one thing about Godzilla movies that you got to understand is they usually fall into one of three categories. Okay. You got the first type of category, which is your serious Godzilla movie. The one that's an allegory movie, sort of as the original 1950s Godzilla, Godzilla minus one, you know, where they're, they're using Godzilla as an allegory. Like for the original movie, it was, you know, um, he was an allegory for the atomic bomb. You know, you got the other ones where he's, you know, an allegory for destruction and what have you. So these are your darker, deeper. You can even say Godzilla versus Headlums kind of like that because that was like anti-pollution. So you got the ones that like have the message. They're more story driven. Godzilla's just like the storm or the tornado or the big event that, you know, ruins everybody's lives. Then you got the ones that try to be more of a science fiction type of Godzilla. That's when you start getting into like the 2000s and stuff. I think that's the Heisei. I, I get the like the actual director's names a little mixed up, so I apologize for that. But we're going to say the uh, late two thousand, the two thousand movies. They try to get a little bit more science fictiony. They try to give it a little bit more of a storyline, but they're trying to be a little bit serious too. Like you would think, like maybe Godzilla versus Biolanti or Godzilla versus Destroyer, where they're doing more of the science fiction thing. And then you got. Your campy Godzilla. You got the cheesy Godzillas of the 70s, 80s, where it was just basically giant monsters beating each other up and the storyline didn't matter. And this movie falls in the line of that. So if you like 80s, 70s, 80s Godzilla movies, you're going to like this movie because it falls in that kind of category of Godzilla. Do you agree with that, Bill? Yeah, absolutely. So the movie is more Kong. Related the storyline, what little storyline it has is more about Kong. A lot of it's about King Kong, him trying to find his people and what have you. So Godzilla is in it. He's a powerhouse, but he's like in a bunch of other Godzilla movies to where he's there. When he's there, he's there, and he's Godzilla. When he isn't there, you know, other things are happening. You know, so. Let's start getting into this movie. So first off, it starts out with the two main monsters. Okay, first, it takes some place after Godzilla versus King Kong. They don't really specifically say when. Um, you know, the humans have established a base down in, you know, the hollow earth. Godzilla's doing his gig up top. King Kong's doing his gig. Now, the funny thing I feel about the opening to this is the factor that both kaiju are in two do totally different places, okay? King Kong, he's old, he looks rough, he got a freaking cavity, you know? He's being chased by dogs, and he, you know, he's struggling to live, and he's living a rough life. I mean, you know, you can see Kong is not happy where he is, he's living a rough life, you know, he's hard up. Or Godzilla, he's just living life. He's, you know, living La Vida Loca, man. He's smashing other monsters. He's sleeping in the um, Coliseum. Coliseum. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Godzilla just like, whatever. He's just doing his thing. He's living life as a king like he should. You know, uh, what do you think about those two things, Bill? <clears throat> yeah, the fact that, you know, King Kong is basically had a rough go of it. And then Godzilla's just like, yeah, I'm going to sleep in the Coliseum because I'm the king of the monsters. So, yeah. There ain't nothing you're going to do about it. What are you going to do? <laughs> I'm going to sleep here and you're going to look at me. So, now, this movie branches off into three <coughs> different directions, okay? So, what's happening is these weird seismic um, signals are going across the country, all right? Across the world. So, King Kong... 
is all trying to find his people. He's trying to discover himself. He's trying to find his people. Uh, the little deaf girl, she's trying to find herself as well. Her and King Kong's storylines are kind of a mirror of each other. Kong's trying to find <laughs> his people. Uh, the little girl, she's trying to figure out where she belongs in the world. And then when they go into the hollow earth, she's now off to look for her people. All right. And then Godzilla, he is sensing something with these seismic waves. So he's preparing for a fight. Godzilla is sensing that something ain't right here. So he's starting to, you know, gear up for a big battle and the humans are following him around because they're the narrative. They're running like, oh, look, he's preparing for stuff. You know, uh, wh what do you think about that? You think that's pretty accurate that it branches off into three main storylines? Yeah, because like you said, the little girl... King Kong, they both kind of intersect, but it's separate, you know, it has separate meanings. Yeah. If you would say. So, now, for anybody who's a Godzilla fan, you're going to find a lot of member berries in this to some of the older Godzilla shows, okay? Or movies, actually. Godzilla was a series of movies, not shows. So, there's a lot of that in that. Now, let's first talk about the King Kong storyline. So, King Kong, you know, he's having the rough of it. He come, comes up because he finally finds his people, all right? Now, this might sound a little crude, but I get a very big old-school Planet of the Apes feeling with, this King, with the King Kong storyline, all right? He's a rogue ape. He finds his people. They're being... You know, run by another ape, which we all know from the uh, previews as Scar Ape, I believe his name is. And, you know, King Kong ain't liking what he's doing to his people. They're pretty much enslaved by this guy, well, this ape. King Kong challenges him, and he gets his rear end handed to him. Because not only is the ape more limber than him, he's a little bit better of a fighter, but he also has, uh, what was her name, Shiri? Yes. Sure, yeah. Sherry, which is basically an ice dragon. Now, the thing I think neat about her is the way how I look at her body design. Her body almost reminds me of Angelus from the old Godzilla movies. Not quite, but if you look at it, you can see slight hints of it. Like they're basically the same species. That's how that, that's how I saw her look. You know, she has an um, ice ray. That she, you know, shoots. And what it is, is Scar has her under control because he has his crystal that he waves at her and hurts her and keeps <clears throat> her in check. So that's the whole King Kong storyline. And then King Kong comes up to the surface, which is a big no-no. <laughs> because in the last movie, Godzilla and King Kong kind of had a truce like, look, Godzilla, I stay up here. We all good. You stay down there, as long as we're <coughs> on our own side of the tracks, life is good, you know? So, King Kong is forced up, he's rough, the, the humans help him out, and then he goes back to deal with what he has to deal with. Um, what's your thoughts on the Kong storyline? I, I mean, I like it, because it's more, you know, showing that as he's a monster, but there's kind of a human trait. Because yeah. he's, he's looking to find himself. Well, that's why I used to reference the Planet of the Apes. Yeah. You know, it, it had very much of that feel to it. Where, yeah, King Kong is a great character in this movie. I like King Kong as a character. Because they give him a lot of personality. He's doing his own... And the neat thing about him, also, is he can tell his story without speaking. Like when you're watching King Kong and he's interacting with these other giant apes, you know, um, there's no talking, but the way how they communicate, you, <laughs> you, you can pretty much understand what's going on. You don't need words, you know, yeah. you know, what do you think about that, Bill? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you can just feel that the connection to the characters mm -hmm. with each other. But one of the funniest things in the world. Okay, so King Kong's off looking for his people. And he finds, you know, the little ape. Because what happened was the um, gorillas destroyed the outpost. All right, they destroyed the outpost. That's what's bringing the humans down. So humans are looking at the outpost while King Kong's off finding himself. 
okay? <coughs> so when you first interact, you know, you see the scene, they showed it in the trailers where you see Kong standing there and then you see this giant ape shadow and then it shrinks down and it's the little monkey. You know, and you think, oh man, they're going to have this cute interaction and not nah, a little dude attacks him and there's like four or five other apes and you get this really cool fight scene. But the funny part is, so you get like three or four apes against Kong. Then you get this little ape who's fighting Kong and Kong takes this little dude and he beats the hell out of everybody with him. And I'm, I'm rolling on the floor with this because he's like literally using the, you know, yeah. beat a motherfucker with a motherfucker type thing. It is hilarious. Take dude by the leg and what? Yeah, and then after that, you know, some of the other apes get killed. The one ape, you know, he's like an older, <laughs> beat-up-looking guy. He runs, you know, for cover. Kong keeps the little ape, and then they start to build a rapport because I think the little apes used to being abused. So when he starts seeing that Kong is actually treating them right, you know, sharing his food with them and what have you, the little ape starts to feel a connection with them, you know. You agree, Bill? Oh, yeah. I think maybe he sees him as a big brother. Or even a father or figure. Or a father figure. Yeah. Because you can tell in the eyes of the little ape that he has seen a lot of pain. Yeah. So, now we start getting into the human storyline. So, the human storyline is Kong comes up. The humans see him. Uh, he gets a tooth transplant because he has a cavity. So apparently if Kong gets a cavity, that ruins his whole life. I don't know. So they replace his tooth. They go down there with Kong. And, you know, they found out that these giant apes attacked their outpost and ruined the whole thing. And, you know, because they're establishing that the seismic waves that everybody is seeing is a call for help. So somebody's calling for help from, you know, the lower depths of the... Um, uh. The underground earth. What uh, what do they call it again? Underground earth. Yeah. So um, so they're trying to figure that out. As they're figuring that out, you get established with a couple <coughs> of characters. All right. Now the 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 human storyline ain't that bad. All right. It's not the best thing in the world. It ain't the worst, but it drives the story. It's a story, you know, that kind of give purpose to this movie because you need some sort of storyline. As much as we would love to just. Sit there for two hours watching a bunch of giant guys <coughs> beating the hell out of each other. You know, they do need some grasp of a story. So, you know, the little deaf girl can't commute. She isn't fitting in well with society. Um, the scientist that took her on as a mother, you know, she's, you know, she's upset because she wants her to fit in. But the kid isn't fitting in. And now she's finding out that these seismic waves are you know, doing something to her, messing with her head. Because apparently now she has, like, psychic abilities as well. Yeah. So they get a hold of the um, podcast guy from the fir from Godzilla versus King Kong, and he's going to help him out. Then they get this one dude, and I like this guy. I like this guy. The um, He's a kaiju um, doctor. So he's, like, you know, a vet for kaiju, and he's the one who replaces Kong. And he... I feel like he has a lot of personality. This guy really pops out at you. He, he has personality. You kind of like like the guy, you know. Um, what's your thoughts on the different characters and the, the main characters of the movie? Yeah, the uh, I guess you would say veterinarian Dennis. He's fun. He just comes in and you can just tell he demands attention because he's funny. Well, not only is he funny, but he respects environment. Yeah. Like, they had, like, a, um, like a military guy. He was a pilot for their ship when they go into the, um, you know, um, Earth. Yeah. And um, he gets wiped out. Instantly. You know? Yeah. You know, he's trying to tell him, look, man, things don't feel right here. There's something that ain't right in this spot. I can sense it. The guy's like, oh, I tr trust my technology over you. And, you know, he gets eaten by a tree. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the um, podcast guy, he's really upset. He's like, oh, my God, this guy just... And dude's like, look, man, we can deal with this later. Right now, we're in this situation. And you got to respect nature. And that's the one thing I like about this character. He has a lot of personality. And he respects nature. He respects the flow of things. He's like, look, we can mourn later. We just got to deal with what we got to deal with now. So out of all the human characters, he's the one I liked the most. All right. So they're off on this venture, 
and what have you. And then they discovered the um, hidden people. Okay. This is um, the Death Girls people. Okay. So following the storyline in Godzilla versus King Kong, Skull Island was destroyed. And they thought all of her people were destroyed. You know, the, the protectors of Skull Island, they were all killed in a freak storm. She's the only survivor. But now there's another colony of the same people who live underground, you know, in the Hollow Earth. Finally got the name right again. The Hollow Earth. And they are the tribe of Mothra, okay? Now, if you're a Godzilla fan, you know that there was, in the early Godzilla movies, around the 80s, which a lot of this is pretty much based on, there was a tribe of Mothra, and they had Mothra there because... We know that one Mothra was killed in uh, Godzilla, King of All Mo Monsters. But, just like the old eight, 70s and 80s movies, there was two Mothras. So, that Mothra was killed. Now, we have the second Mothra. So, these people remind me of the old tribe of Mothra from the old Godzilla movies. Alright? And, not only do they remind me of the tribe of Mothra, but they also re remind me of the, um, the people from, I think it was... Return to the Planet of the Apes or whatever that lived among the ape people. But they, they lived beyond the Forbidden Zone. Like they created this Forbidden Zone so the apes couldn't get to them. And this is another reason why I get this Planet of the Apes vibe. But we're talking about the old Planet of the Apes. Not the remakes, but we're talking about the old ones. So you get that feeling that the apes are fighting over here. But humanity is still there. But they keep themselves hidden from the apes. And they become more psychic. And that's another comparison between the old planet of the apes in this movie. Is that these people are psychic. They can speak with their minds. You know, they have, you know, psychic abilities. Which was very similar to, I can't remember what planet of the apes movie it was. I think, like I said, I think it was Return to or whatever. Where the people had psychic abilities and they kept the apes away and what have you. So, once again, that go connects back into that whole planet of the apes vibe. So, they find her people, and then they find out the history of Godzilla and these apes. So, the history is, is that uh, Scar, the Scar ape, wanted to ruin the um, surface world. He was raging, you know, destruction on top. Godzilla showed up and sent him and whatever's left of his um, ape people into a prison in the hollow earth. So they were all stuck there to live there. And Godzilla defeated all of them. And they were stuck there. And one day he looks to come back up. And he found, you know, Shuri, I believe it's called. The, we're going to just call it the Ice Dragon. Because I'm horrible with names, so I apologize about that. And he lives for his day to where he can come back up to the earth. So that's basically the human storyline. Um, your thoughts on the human storyline, Bill? I mean, it was, it was good. Not, you know, again, not anything really spectacular, but it was good for what they did with it. Yeah. So, and once again, so, you, like I said, you get a lot of 70s, 80s Godzilla member berries with this and stuff. Matter of fact, I hate to say it, when I saw the tribe of um, Mothra down in the Hollow Earth, I was almost thinking, oh man, I was getting ready to see the two fairies show up. I think that would have been awesome if you had like just two little Asian girls, you know, singing the moth or what have you. But, you know, it wasn't there. So now we get into the Godzilla storyline. So Godzilla's on top, on top of the world. Any kaiju who decides, hey, we're going to fight Godzilla, he takes them out like they're nothing. And, you know, living like La Vida Loca. So he's sensing these seismic waves as well. And he knows something's coming. Now, when we learned that Godzilla was the one who banished Scar and all them into the, you know, Hollow Earth. When he's getting this communication, that sees Mothra people, as I'm going to call them, the tribe of Mothra. They didn't really officially give them that name, but that's basically what they are. And, you know, so they sent out a signal to Godzilla. Hey, look, this dude might be getting loose again. You need to do what you got to do. So Godzilla's out pumping himself up. All right, so... Godzilla goes to France, and he takes out a nuclear facility to charge himself up. Now, that's more of a reference to 
if you go by Japan, it's Godzilla 1984. If you go by the American version, it's Godzilla 1985. But in that movie, they show Godzilla charging up from nuclear, you know, uh, power plants. So you have that member buried to where he's charging himself up from that. And then he goes into the ocean and right around the Arctic Circle, he finds this other uh, sort of like a dragon style you know, kaiju, and he takes that kaiju out, goes in her little hole, and he's, you know, takes a nap, and he's charging himself, he's gearing himself up, because I forgot, I think they said there was something special about her um, spot under the Arctic ice. Do you remember that, Bill? They said something about the power there or something yeah, in her the, territory. It was the power of the, like, kaiju that was living there. If Gotcha, they got that, he would be supercharged, basically. Yeah. So, he takes that kaiju out like it was nothing, man. They have, like, a little underwater fight scene, and he pretty much takes her out. All right. So, now he's resting. So, that's the three individual storylines, and now we're starting to get to where they start colliding together, where these three storylines start coming together. So... What brings these storylines together first is Kong interacts with the other apes and he pretty much gets his rear end handed to him in a pretty impressive fight with, you know, Scar um, Ape. Uh, what's your thoughts on that fight, Bill? Oh, uh, it was, it was good. Uh, Kong got, you know, it was, it wasn't good for Kong. Yeah, like I said, Kong, he was putting up a good fight. Um, the Scar Ape realized what he was fighting, and he, he saw a threat in Khan. So, what any coward does, or dictator does, is instead of fighting him, finishing the fight, he pulled out the Ice Dragon, and the Ice Dragon freezes his arm. So, freezes his arm. Khan knew he couldn't beat this thing. So, the little monkey, or the little ape, showed him a way out, so Kong escapes with, you know, barely his life intact. They find, you know, the Mothra, you know, the tribe of Mothra there. Kong shows up, he's all beat up. And the one shady ape from before that he beat his ass, you know, found it. So he lets, you know, Scar know, like, hey, look, we got this tribe here. Now, the, neat, the other thing about this tribe is they're kind of at a magnetic or gravitational neutral spot. There's two pyramid crystals that come together and they can manipulate grav gravitational forces in there <clears throat> so they can like lift heavy rocks easier and stuff like that. And there's also a couple secret portals to the, you know, above world from there as well. And this ape sees that and he lets Scar knows and Scar's like, okay, well, hey, they got this. We're going to escape through these secret portals. So... They realize Kong is all busted up. As usual. Yeah. Now, this is where the dentist guy says, Hey, wow, look. You know, we got the power glove that we can get for King Kong. All right? <laughs> and, of course, <coughs> conveniently enough, it just happened to be in the hollow earth. So he gets the power glove. We all seen the commercials where he has the glove, you know. Some people joke about, Oh, it's, it's King... Infinity yeah, it's, it's Infinity Gauntlet <laughs> or whatever. So... Not only is this thing designed to, like, heal that arm, but it also pumps King Kong up. It pumps him up on drugs, and it makes him stronger. So, you know, King Kong gets his, you know, high on. They shoot this stuff into his arms, and, you know, it makes him stronger. And they're like, well, he's either going to do one thing. Either he's going to accept it, or he's going to flip out. And, you know, King Kong winds up accepting it. He holds his hand up like, yeah, I got the power. And, you know, they're, they're ready to deal with Star, Scar. And the way King Kong figures out how he's going to deal with Scar is he's like, look, I can't do this alone. We need Godzilla. So King Kong's going to bravely go up to the surface world and try to convince Godzilla into joining him. If he doesn't convince Godzilla into joining him, they're going to have a rumble because Godzilla, cause Godzilla already told him, stay off my turf. You know? So, uh, what's your thoughts up to this point in the movie, Bill? I mean, it was it was good, and I really do like the fact that you know it, 
it's campy, but like they said, the Infinity Gauntlet type thing for God, Godzilla, uh, Kong. King Kong. Uh, it was like, okay, let's see where they go with this. It's kind of a little out there, but the fact it gave him more strength and actually made him not weak. Yeah. Now, the other thing to it is it looks like it gives off, it almost gives off like an electric charge or like, you know, like you see like little lightning and electricity flowing through it. And that can also be a reference to the old King Kong versus Godzilla movie where King Kong gets hit by lightning and becomes stronger and, you know, he becomes electric charge. And they sort of do that with this glove. Like when he punches stuff, you see like the electricity and stuff. So that can also be a reference to that as well. Very possible. So King Kong and, you know, a little ape dude comes up to the surface. Godzilla senses him. King Kong, you know, is standing in between the pyramids. He's screaming. Godzilla senses him, screams on some little island. He comes swimming. Godzilla's pissed. He is mad that Kong is, you know, in his territory. So Kong is like standing down. He's like, yo, whoa, whoa, whoa. And he even has his hands up. Yo, 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 yo. And Kong, Godzilla wasn't even hearing it, man. He gets into a battle. And they get into a pretty, pretty cool battle. Like, who is it? Was it Kong or was it Godzilla who suplexed the other one? Uh, Godzilla suplexed Kong. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, we're we're seeing some real WWE stuff in some of these fights, which is hilarious. It's hilarious, but it's fun at the same time. So they get into this big fight. You know, <coughs> King Kong uses the power glove to, you know, smack Godzilla around a little bit. And so, you know, saying, hey, look, man, you know, we need to do this. All right, if you ain't going to join me, I'm going to beat you up a little bit. So... They give King Kong a little bit of a win there. He knocks Godzilla out for probably about a minute because he starts to try to drag him into the hollow earth. Godzilla was like, yo, we ain't doing this. And, you know, burns King Kong up, beats him down, and he's getting ready to stomp him into the end of the world <coughs> until Mothra shows up. All right? So getting back to the human part of this, the humans were going to wake up Mothra. Um, the little uh, death girl... You know, because these people can communicate psychically, she doesn't need to talk to them. She can communicate psychically to them as well. So they can all communicate that way. And she was prophesied to be the one from the surface who wakes up Mothra. All right. So um, she walks up to her. I guess she does some sort of mental thing. Now, me, being an old school Godzilla fan, I'm waiting for the song. And we all know the Mothra song growing up. If you're an old school Godzilla fan, you know the Mothra song. That the two little fairies always sing, Mothra, I ain't even going to try to sing it because I don't sing that good. But I'm expecting the damn Mothra song and they didn't do it. I would have lost my shit if they would have done the Mothra song. You know, I, I, I would have just lost it right there. But no, they didn't do it. So Mothra comes up. Godzilla's getting two steps to killing Kong. All right. And Mothra stops him from killing him. She's like, look. You know, she doesn't say, once again, they, the neat thing about this movie is the kaijus communicate, but they don't use words, but they communicate in a way that you know what's going on, okay? You know what's going on. So she's convincing Godzilla, hey, look, you need to work with Kong to save the world because, you know, Scar King and his crew, they're coming, they're planning on coming to the service, and they're going to, you know, try to destroy everything. Now, this, once again, is another 70s, 80s reference. Um, I think it was Godzilla versus King Ghidorah, if I remember right, uh, to where uh, Mothra actually comes up to Angelus and Godzilla. It was Angelus and Godzilla in that movie, and she convinced them... No, it was Angelus, Godzilla, and Rodan. That's right. So I think it was actually Monster Zilla, or Zero. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, if you know exactly what Godzilla movie I'm referencing, go ahead and um, tell us in the comments. But she had to convince Godzilla, Angelus, and Rodan to fight the big monster. And I think it was King Ghidorah. Usually when you get a team up, it's always King Ghidorah that they're fighting. So I forgot what exact Godzilla movie that was. But there was one where Mothra does convince Godzilla 
to try to save the world because God's always like, no, nah, I'm going to do my own thing. She's like, look, man, you got to do this. We got to save our world. So her doing this with Godzilla and King Kong, to me, feels like a reference to that Godzilla movie to where, you know, she gets them to fight the big baddie. Um, so what's your thoughts on it so far at this point, Bill? Yeah, again, I'm super entertaining and like, you definitely, I didn't take my eyes off the screen once up until that point. So they go down into the earth. All right. They're, now they're in the hollow earth. Scar King and his crew shows up. You know, Godzilla, King Kong, Mothra, they're all ready to get fighting these guys. And then, you know, the humans came up with this idea that, hey, look, if you bring the two pyramids, the crystal pyramids together, it would make all gravity neutral. And then, you know, they'd have a moment to where they can try to keep Scar from, you know, coming up to the surface. So, you know, you see that iconic scene where Godzilla comes out of dirt, King Kong's running, and then they're doing the Avengers run. You know, you hear the Avenger music in the background. Dun, 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 dun. Now, you should be hearing it because that's what it felt like. So then gravity goes neutral, so they're all floating around. They're having this real anti-gravity battle, which is kind of really cool. You know, they're flipping and bouncing around and stuff. Probably Godzilla's the more experienced one with this because he's used to fighting underwater. So he's used to feeling, you know, fighting in that kind of, you know, thing. But it's a really cool fight. It's a lot of fun. Mothra is, like, webbing up, you know, any um, stray apes that might be fighting. So they're keeping the battle pretty much towards Godzilla, Kong, Scar, and the Ice Dragon. And even the little monkeys fighting, the, the traitor monkey. You know, so, they're, so everybody's having, like, this... Back and forth, one on one kind of battle. It was a really fun scene. You know, um, what do you think about that scene, Bill? It was probably my favorite scene, honestly. Like that giant fight scene between all of them. Because it was action packed, and you can tell that they wanted to put in just a great fight scene. It was like a whole bunch of. In like a ninja movie, when all the ninjas come, mm -hmm. and it was just awesome. Yeah, so it, it was a really fun fight scene. So, gravity is returned, everybody comes to the ground, and now they bring the fight up to the surface. So now we're getting our final battle up on the surface. Um, it has the scene where you see in the um, commercials where the ice dragon shoots ice up in the air, makes everything cold. And what have you. So they're having their final battle down in South America. I forget where in South America. It's, um, shoot, where the giant Jesus statue is. I can't remember the place. but uh, So that's where they're having their final battle at. And that's the battle where you see the thing where um, Skull King got the spinal cord whip. And he rips off the top of the building. Flings it at King Kong. So it's that whole fight. And this bo you get this giant battle Roy L fight. You know, it's bouncing off of each other. It's destroying. I mean, probably millions of people were just killed. A lot of property damage. I mean, they're leveling everything. But it's a kaiju movie, so you're not even caring about that. It's just total, you know, free-for-all combat. And the fight scene was a lot of fun. You know, and that's the one thing about this movie. You got a lot of fun fight scenes. You know, they, they're all just going at it with each other. Uh, you agree, Bill? Yeah, and you get a lot more, like, wrestling-type moves, like, fight moves, like, picking up and sliding them on the ground. And once again, this is another reference to the old Godzilla movies, all right? So in the old Godzilla movies, they did crazy stuff like that. You know, Godzilla, even Ultraman, like, you, you go to any of the 70s, 80s kaiju movies of that time, and you're getting all sorts of goofy, weird... WWF style fighting matches between these monsters. Even Gamera got like that at times too. So this isn't out of the realm of those kind of movies. That's what they were like back in the days. You know, there was oh shoot, I think it was um um Gigan where um Jet Jaguar holds him, you know, and then Godzilla does the famous tail, you know, kick at him and stuff like that. So 
once again, a lot of this is a reference to that era of Godzilla. So you're going to get the corny campy fights. You're going to get them rolling all over the ground. The only difference now is now they had the CGI technology to make it a lot more intense, make it a lot faster moving, opposed to a bunch of guys in rubber suits with explosions all around them. So, you know, it's really, really a fun scene. You know, I'm not going to ruin how it exactly ends. For any of you who are watching this and just curious about the movie, I don't want to spoil the end of the fight. But for the most part, Skull King is, I mean, I'm sorry, Scar King is defeated. They all team up and defeat him. They break the crystal that, you know, en ensnared the ice dragon. So now the ice dragon is free. All is good. Skull King, I mean, Scar King is defeated. And then life goes on, you know. So Kong jo rejoins his people. Godzilla's like, all right, man, you know what? I'm tired. I'm going to go take another nap in the Coliseum again. You know, Mothra returns to her people. And, you know, everybody's good and happy. You know, and that's, for essence, is the movie. You know, there's a little bit more dialogue between the humans and stuff at the end. You know, they get their stuff situated. And it's packaged up nice and neatly. Now, there isn't any kind of um, credit scene, like extra scenes or nothing. So, once the credit's rolling, the, done, the movie's done, you can go home. So, overall, it was great. Uh, what do you think, Bill? Yeah, I loved it. It was just a great all-around kaiju movie so i yeah once again i enjoyed it if you're going to this movie to get a godzilla minus one feel this is the wrong godzilla movie for you all right because this isn't that kind of godzilla movie this is once again i categorize it in the 70s 80s style godzilla where you get a weak human storyline but you get a lot of fun kaiju fighting so if you're into that era of Godzilla, you'll like this movie because that's exactly what it is. It's just fun. You know, a whole bunch of giant kaijus beating the living life out of each other and a lot of fun fighting. Um, as far as the fight count goes, Godzilla reigns overall. OK, nobody pretty much beats Godzilla in this movie. He, he pretty much is the powerhouse. You know, he is the power. King, so he was the one that they called in to deal with the mess. King Kong was your story-driven character. So he served more as part of the storyline going forward where Godzilla was there to clean up, you know, and just, you know, wipe out anybody who was, you know, a problem. But overall, I really liked the movie. It was a lot of fun, and I enjoyed it for what it is. And I would highly recommend this movie to any Godzilla fan who likes these newer Godzilla movies. Um, you know, if you like these, uh, the latest Godzilla movies, you'll like this one. If you like Godzilla vs. King Kong, you'll like this movie. If you like the old 70s, 80s Godzilla movies, you're more than likely to like this one. If you're looking for, once again, a minus, well, minus one or Godzilla 1950s, this ain't your Godzilla movie. All right, so that's my personal thoughts on this. What is your thoughts on this movie? Yeah, I'm basically the same boat as you. It, it's a movie that's just there for the sheer enjoyment of giant monsters fighting. Yeah. So, yeah, I would definitely give this probably four out of five myself. Uh, I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, you know, uh, what would you kind of rate this as, Bill? Uh... I'd give it a six. Six out of five? Oh. Oh. The... <laughs> yeah. uh, you really like this movie. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> I'd wow. give it a five, too, actually. So you're, all right, so I'm giving it a four. You give it a five? Yeah. All right, so that's our thoughts on this movie. Um, I hope you guys liked this review. If you did, go ahead and check out my Godzilla Kaiju um, playlist, where I do a lot of review on a lot of the uh, figures and such of Kaiju movies. And also hit that like, share, and subscribe button. They're all small clicks for you, but it really helps this channel grow. And if you like us doing these reviews, let us know in the comments because if more people like these reviews, we will do more of them. It's something that I'm experimenting with, so I'm not sure how many more reviews. But if you people really like that, I'll do all the Godzilla movies. You know, that, that wow. 
Mm. And that, that'd be a lot of movies. Wouldn't but be I, there forever. Yeah, but, you know, I would definitely look into something like that for future videos on this channel. So, with all that being said, have a good one. Late.